What's going on, everybody? Today is December 24th, 2020, and uh, this is what got our attention. Merry Christmas Eve to all of you guys listening out there, and ladies, gals, or whatever you want to, or anything in between, whatever you may consider yourself. Uh, have a, uh, a happy, merry, festivus Christmas night. Uh, it's before the night of the actual day. So I'm here with Brian. Damn, you still managed to find a way to fuck up the intro. <laughs> It's like my mission at this point. <laughs> Mostly, I had a totally different thing I was going to talk about here. Well, you're welcome, and I'm also here with you. You, you just you just go on. I'm here with also with Bruno. Oh god, so hurts. much fucking rambling, just so much like oh. just like word vomit, basically like Christmas word vomit. It should be. It's like ah uh, yeah, like well, welcome to the to the show <laughs> slash podcast, guys. Happy holidays, <laughs> Merry Christmas, whatever the fuck. You know, people are Chris celebrating. Quantica. I don't know. Who cares about the holidays? I'm just kidding. Yeah, as we're all dressed up. If you if you can't watch the Fiesta. the podcast right now, we're all in our festive gear. I'm wearing my gingerbread suit, uh, along with uh, Brian wearing his Festivus uh, ugly sweater with a little cat wearing. No, f- Fiesta, not Festivus. I said Fiesta. Yeah, it's clearly, Fiesta clearly, it's clearly on it. a. What the hell, clearly, dude? Uh, racially insensitive cat with a we, we are legitimately oh. like less than a minute maybe less than two minutes into this and you're making so many how festivus i expect better from yes yeah, so it's fun right and then we have i mean it literally is a spanish and we word. literally have our resident elf with us as well as <laughs> Bruno is wearing his full elf costume which is great so what, uh, yeah it's, and, and all of us managed to wear a just enough green that the background is just flowing through some of us to to different amounts, like least of all Mike, but he has a little bit of snowflakes going through his green there. My green seems to match the chroma key like identically. So I am a floating head above the word fiesta as snowflakes go through my entire body. And as Mike and put it, right I literally look us. like I'm wearing a light suit. Yeah. Like it's perfect. Yeah, it's dude, dude. <clears throat> Bruno looks like he has got an expensive ass. <laughs> led laden suit and he's ready to go to fucking burning man i mean this is literally what i would expect I, uh, elon musk to wear like at a at a convention for christmas was, this is this is my cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> christmas cosplay there you go <laughs> right that's fantastic well you know you you are going to be tripping out so many people at burning man with that thing yeah really so obviously my mission in life this is uh, our christmas eve spectacular special uh, not that there's nothing really special sure. or spectacular about it. It was just regular news. But uh, I just remember <laughs> typically, you know, this was the night as a kid that like I was freaking out. And I'm like, I have to go to bed because like if I wake up, what if I wake up too early? And what if Santa's already there while I wake up? Like I'm going to be screwed. So like I would literally stay in bed until like like I could just, you know, and I'd creep out the room and I'd just barely peek my head out to make sure that like. You know, Santa wasn't out there. And of course, I was always at like eight o'clock in the morning or something crazy. You in trouble. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just it's interesting now being an adult and now having a child who's doesn't have anything. He doesn't even understand what Christmas is yet. He's still young for that. But uh, thinking about the future, of how this is going to turn out is going to be interesting because right now it's super easy. I was wrapping presents in front of him like he doesn't even understand what the hell I'm doing. But, you know, obviously a year from now, maybe a year or two from now. That's going to be a whole different ballgame. It's going to be like, how can I get this done? You know, secret, secret agent man trying to get this stuff done. Uh, I do remember uh, actually getting a Game Boy for one Christmas and then uh, also a Sega for one Christmas. So and I, I think I have like you've seen those pictures online where people have like the box and they're like holding it up like this massive thing. And it's uh, something that I had. I had the same memory, same same thing. And uh, it was great. I literally remember getting Atari 2600 games. Uh, and boy, it was a good Christmas, too, because it was like right around where the the console market started to crash. Oh, right. So my mom had gotten several of them on clearance. Did you get E.T.? Uh, I did not. Oh, damn. Thankfully. Uh, but I opened uh, like game after game and literally, literally was leaping in the air sometimes after opening certain uh, gifts up. It was, it was a pretty good Christmas. Yeah. What about you, Brian? Got any, uh, any Christmas memories you want to share with us? So, so 
a fucking loaded question. <laughs> the hell kind of this is like this isn't rated R. Get the hell out of here. What kind of terrible oh, family man. Christmases do you want to hear about? Oh, well, actually, there was one. But many many moons ago, I was I was four, and I remember it very vividly because it was one of the, the only Christmases that didn't suck. Um, <laughs> my uncle, who I had never gotten to meet before, flew in from Portugal, and him and his then wife brought one of those uh like the electric racetracks oh yeah i had one like of those little, those were cool like the little, little go-cars yeah the little like gun. Shove them on the track and yeah yeah and you pull the trigger um, like the slot car yeah the slot car tracks but like a big one and uh yeah that was that was really cool we we fucked with that for like ages um it was like it's like I was thinking six when like it stopped working properly and we like we had our neighbor help us by giving us little fuses and we like fixed the cars because the fuses on those little like on the track like just they just go out and you have to replace them once in a while oh, wow. and like we would like swap out the little motors and put in new ones when they burnt out and stuff like that you had the one with the we loops had a lot of fun with that um no it didn't have loops did it have loops you know it did, no, it did slot, have, it had, slot cars yeah slot cars would fall out well i had one with loops but it's all flat no they, well they, i had they i had out. one with loops but you have to time it just right to get it to go yeah. through the loop and not fly off the track yeah it's i actually have a yeah. video of that we just watched that recently my uh family had some dvds of like old vhs's that were burned which was actually kind of cool <laughs> so yeah christmases are much more entertaining for me now than they were when i was younger to be totally honest. Yeah. Because I, mean, like, I, agree I, don't, I don't care about the holidays personally. Like I'm not a, I'm not a big, I don't consider the holidays a big deal. Cause it was so, so not important in my family. Um, but Savannah, which is my wife, for those of you who don't know, she's like super into Christmas. It's like the, the second that Thanksgiving is over, it's Christmas. Yeah, no, I agree. So, I'm like that. It's like the same like, thing with us, except I'm, I'm the one that's all into Christmas. And she's like, I like Christmas, but I'd rather you just put everything up. <laughs> So I'm the it one is, putting the tree really up nice in the lights and all that stuff. It's really nice to see how into it she gets, and like, so you know, like that that she's so invested in the holiday and she has a lot of fun with it. So especially this it's year, it's better now than it was before. Yeah, this year was like, let's just it started early. I don't even care if it's before Thanksgiving. Let's just put everything up because we just need it. We need this. I need this. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think gravy. this year more than any, you know, if you're a big fan of of Christmas, I hope that you're doing it up to the max if it's possible for you. Yeah, definitely not taking down the tree until at least after New Year's, potentially February. <laughs> when COVID ends, yeah. Yeah. the tree will come down. Yeah, exactly. Lights will stay on the house. We'll just leave them up there. It's fun. Well, and it's still amazing how many people that are still doing large family gatherings oh, during all yeah, this. Yeah, which is just no bueno. like, that's the last thing I want to do. Uh besides other things that have personally happened to me and stuff like that. But I'm like, well, I don't like large family. Gatherings well, I was going to say, let's, anyway. let's be real. There's people doing that. You don't even want to hang out with your family nine times out of the 10 anyway for holidays. So why are you doing it this year? Oh, you cannot get there. You, my siblings, it's a bad thing for them to be all in the same state because, um, it's just too many problems. Yeah, no, I feel you. It's uh, an yeah, interesting year. Very COVID. Yeah, we, we've we actually, I was talking to them earlier, uh, the rest of the guys here, I was saying maybe we could do like a New Year's Eve, like Discord party or something, just so we can at least see some people during uh, the New Year's Eve. Because usually I, I like to throw like the one party of the year that I like to put on is New Year's Eve. And that's like the one time that I like to party of the year. And uh, obviously we can't even do that this year. So I don't know. Halloween. Yeah, that's always a good one too. Halloween's mine. Yeah, I like I liked going to those, but I'd rather let someone else throw it and then I'll just show up. <laughs> I'm not even talking about Halloween parties. I'm just like Halloween, the whole concept. I, I don't care if I go to a party, I'll dress up and scare the neighborhood kids. Uh it's it's great. That sounds like you. You have to dress up to do that? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Definitely not. But especially certain ages. Certain ages are too young and they've got too active an imagination. Man, you just come from a dark corner and growl and you've got like a crying five year old. And it's just then all of a sudden you're the monster for some reason. Crying I don't understand this. I to mean, clarify, for those of you listening. All right. I'm not like outrightly insulting Brian's appearance. Brian has a very specific look that he has perfected, in my opinion, a, a smile, if you will, that is purposely very very that right there jarring that, right that there. one right there yeah looks so, kind of like a creepy doll yeah i could see that 
Yeah. Ugh. It doesn't. It also doesn't help that the pain I'm currently in prevents <laughs> me from smiling normally too. So I mean, it actually adds to the effect. He's currently got a two week debuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh man. Oh man. Well, anyway, those of you listening, uh, er, happy early Christmas, happy merry early Christmas, happy happy Kwanzaa, uh, merry Christmas, whatever. Happy all the things. Uh, happy holidays. Happy. Even if you don't celebrate, just have a happy night. That's fine. That's that's all we ask. And uh, with that, we're yeah. gonna get into the news. Go get stoned, drunk, and laid. Unless yeah. you don't drink, just because. in which case, just chill. Yeah. Uh, actually, what you should do is uh, get a game called Among Us, and then you can play with uh, the rest of the people in the world. So uh, starting yeah. off our news articles today, uh, this week is uh, Among Us. Um, if most of you have known, uh, I think we talked about this last time, that uh, it's been added to the Xbox Game Pass. Uh, so you can pick that up there for free. Uh, on Steam, it's only $5, and on mobile, it's free. Um, they reported now that in November, there was over half a billion people playing Among Us, uh, mostly on mobile. Uh, and that was also beating games like Pokemon Go and Candy Crush Saga. Um, it's by far, this is a uh, Verge article, by far the most popular game ever in terms of monthly players. And uh, which is crazy because we've talked about this before too. The developer, uh, they're called Inner Sloth, and they, they only have four employees that actually created Among Us. And because of the way that Among Us took off, you know, having uh, even AOC, one of our representatives actually on stream playing this with other uh, other top art or top uh, streamers that uh, and other representatives, and other representatives that um, <clears throat> they've actually stopped making Among Us 2, which they had in the making for a little bit. This game came out in 2018. This isn't a new game. Um, they yeah, were done. They were two years old. They were moving on. It's amazing how it's like just taken off like this. Yeah, they were moving on to, to Among Us 2. And because of the way that this resurgence happened, they decided to to cut the ties on that and just start making Among Us better uh, and taking in some of the feedback they've had from the community. So uh, really, really awesome on that. Also, Among Us is going to be hitting uh, Nintendo Switch here soon as well. Um, so that'll also factor into all of that. And to kind of put this in perspective, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, <laughs> which we'll discuss a little bit. Um, you know, obviously one of the most hyped games of this whole year uh, for for since eight years now, um, they've only sold 13 million copies. And we're talking about Among Us has over 500 million. So, yeah, the game price is a lot different. Like I said, five dollars are free versus like a 60 dollar triple A game. Well, I guess it's supposed to be triple A. I don't know. We can talk about that later. Um, but, yeah, that's it's just a it's a it is. It's a major, major um, exciting thing to see, especially for an independent developer. Uh, like I said, four people. Uh, and the game isn't a triple A game. It's not a huge graphical game where there's all these cutscenes. It's just a very basic, you know, concept. Um, but the way that it is, it's so unique that a lot of people, I mean, obviously a lot of people have really, really enjoyed this. And, uh, and I'm glad to see that the, even the developers have gone back to even, you know, cover some of this because they know that there are people wanting to play it and keep playing it and make it better. Turns out that people really like murdering their friends. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like a lot. I mean, I know I do. Yeah. I, I love playing Among it. Us. I both like being crewmate and or I lying. like being being murder or lying. Yeah, like it's just I mean, it's just, you know, it's it's very interesting. Um, and you honestly learn a decent amount about the people you're playing with, um, provided you're playing over voice. Um, I don't think we talk really too much about this um, through the rest of tonight's discussion. So I should note, like Among Us is has grown to such a degree on PC that people have taken it upon themselves to start modding the game. Um, so if you play it already or you don't play it, no, like there's like a lot of crazy stuff going on. There's proximity chat in the game. Oh wow! Um, so you can you can get this mod for it. You join like a voice server that's built into the game, and you go oh, in, that's and the person so can fuck the owner of the server can tweak the distance of the proximity chat and like which radiuses it decreases the volume of the person who's talking to you, um, and then when you go in, you can literally hear people talking or breathing, clearing their throat, making whatever noise they make from where you're at. It has positional audio. Um, so you can or, try and go or and the find killer, them. Or the killer taunting you as he slits your I throat. I was waiting for the... Yeah, that's when I was playing with a friend. There's actually a clip oh, of it God. on his Twitch <laughs> that I have to port over to my my Twitch um, or post on YouTube where like me and him are talking in like this area that's like a medical bay, essentially. And he's like, we need a secret word so that like we like we know if someone's playing us and i was like all right well let's make the secret word kill and then i stabbed him <laughs> oh, <laughs> but only one other person could just barely hear it and like 
That person was like, I swear I heard somebody say it, blah, 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 but I don't know who it was. And then I went and I found that person the next round, and I was like, hey, just so you know, the secret word is kill. And then I stabbed him. <laughs> and, like, nobody heard him. Like, he was just dead. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that's that you can right, do. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Bruno, the man who is totally blowing away all Canadian stereotypes since 1999. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah, I mean, it's hilarious because um, once you're dead, the proximity <sighs> chat doesn't stop. It's just only dead people can hear you. So in one round, um, I was sussed as the imposter because I was, and I had killed a bunch of people. And I convinced the person with the final task, who was a ghost, to not complete the task after, while I was alive, I swore that a certain person who was in fact not an imposter could vouch for me so much that everybody believed that he had to be my accomplice. <laughs> So then when my actual accomplice killed two more people and I convinced this ghost not to finish his task and they went to a vote on three, they voted off the innocent guy and we won because I tricked the living people as I died oh and I tricked God. the dead people from the dead. It was amazing. And it's all possible because of proximity chat. Another one is, another mod is Jester. This is the last mod that I'll discuss because the other ones get really convoluted. Jester adds a new role into the game where you can be either one of the two imposters, one of the... Um, seven crewmates, or you can be the jester. The jester's entire goal is to play terribly in order to confuse the crap out of the crewmates <laughs> so that they don't know who to vote. So it's almost like the and village idiot is, when it comes to werewolf. It sounds it, like. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the village idiot. So you're trying to throw suspicion onto people who aren't the imposter. So you're just trying to throw suspicion on, on anybody. Just confuse things, make things weird. Sometimes you might choose the imposter, Sometimes you might choose a crewmate without knowing, and you may make the crewmates lose the game. How fitting um, for you to wear so, the jester-looking elf outfit. How fitting. God. There you go, but it's really cool. Next, so, next week on Criminal Minds. <laughs> and uh, it's it's funny that we open this by talking about one of the most played games being a game where you like to kill your friends, uh, because the next thing we have to talk about is uh, is actually kind of the opposite um this uh this year's um co-op game of the year is none other than phasmophobia which is a game about working in unison with three other people while getting or well up to three other people <laughs> to capture or identify a ghost essentially and survive so we, we go you go from trying to murder your friends to doing your best to keep your friends alive and identify what exactly it is you're looking for in terms of what kind of a ghost you are you are hunting um so they did win co-op game of the year um if you haven't heard us talk about phasmophobia it is exactly what i just explained it is a co-op based ghost hunting game um where you get a mission to go into a specific area whether it be a house or ranch or a prison or a high school um and jail yeah, you you go in and you have certain equipment that you can use, um, temperature readers, EMF, um, video cameras, UV lights, stuff like that. And you try and identify um, what kind of a ghost you're hunting and then you try and leave with everybody alive so that you can report back to base essentially what kind of a ghost it is so they can clear it out as a general idea. Um, it's a very intense game for a lot of people. Yeah, um, it is designed to be thrilling and scary. Um, and it does have a VR option if that is something that you uh, you're equipped to utilize. Yeah, I mean it's it's a game that twelve fifty nine. Twelve fifty nine on Steam, mm -hmm. and I'm very very disappointed in Mike, where we couldn't that he didn't want to stream it tonight. Perfect night, nightmare before Christmas. No. The uh, so the thing with Phasmophobia too is, as we said, independent <clears throat> developers like this is a game that we've talked about before. We said, but uh, there is only one developer for this game. Kinetic Games is one one guy that's that's been building this, and uh, even over the time, and and again, another game that kind of came out of nowhere that wasn't a very like well known game, wasn't put out like a lot of advertisement, but uh, some Twitch streamers kind of picked it up and ran with it, and it turned into this like this huge game to where. Uh, even him uh, and, and I'll give props to it for him to be by himself to to still be able to put out updates and and some of these like fixes and things that people have discovered since there's so many people playing it. 
Uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Speaking of companies that can't do that when they're on a larger scale, uh, which we'll cover later. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty interesting on that. The obviously phasmophobia um, is a it's very similar to any kind of ghost hunter TV show. So ghost hunter, ghost hunters, or uh, ghost adventures, whatever you want to watch. Any of those shows, it's very similar to that. And this is basically the closest you're going to get to a, a virtual um, sense of that. So it's really neat. So moving on to the DMCA, uh, the Digital Millennial, Millennium, not Millennial, Copyright Act, uh, something that we talk about every now and then. There's a couple of things that have happened recently. Uh, the government is doing their annual, uh, hey, here's our budget for the next year and bill, and of which you know many people are looking at it because of things like stimulus checks this year. Um, uh, and they, and like, the budget for NASA is in there and a bunch of other things. And this is a time where a lot of lawmakers, a lot of representatives are able to get things done for their states or for their constituents or for, you know, or for their lobbyists that give them money uh, that may not be able to pass normally because there wouldn't be enough support from both sides. And one of those was, uh, a concern to a lot of people in the essentially streaming industry of which we're members, uh, you know, both Mike and Bruno are affiliates at Twitch right now. Uh, so Tom Tillis, who is a Republican Senator, uh, he put an act into the, you know, the, this giant 5,000 plus page yeah, just slide it in you know, bill and it it was it was to basically set up for streaming that if you stream copyright materials that it becomes a felony uh and a lot of people are super concerned about this and rightfully so but th there's a couple of things to understand first of all most copyright infringements already are felony so this is kind of bringing this to the same level as all the rest already are. It's kind of leveling it out, uh, uh, which is a very common thing that happens. Also, I'm not a lawyer. Don't take any legal advice from me. Don't do anything legally based off of anything that you hear on the show uh, ever. Not even any segment. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's that part. Sounds super concerning at first, but when you realize that most of the other copyright infringement stuff are already considered felonies, that it's actually just kind of bringing that up to the same level. Um, and another big concern was like, oh, why well, if I get a DMCA takedown or, you know, if, if, if I accidentally, if I'm streaming a game and that game has copyrighted music in it, like Cyberpunk 2077, that their, their DMCA safe mode didn't flag certain songs that actually should have been flagged. You know, am I going to like get a felony? And the, the, the tentative answer so far is no, because this really isn't meant for that. The whole concept behind this was for these large commercial type people taking advantage of loopholes and just streaming out tons and tons and tons of copyrighted, materials. I mean, you, you can go on YouTube and you can find a channel that has like an entire movie on it. Yeah. For and sure. it's not, it's not the official YouTube release of the movie. It's just some people have the entire movie out there. And if they monetize that and make money off of it, well, that's, that's a clear violation of copyright. Yeah. There's like subreddits for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so that's what most of it was meant for. Now, it's still early. And the other thing, too, though, is that if it becomes a law, which it hasn't so far, uh, but if it becomes a law, the thing is, is that that's the problem is, is once the law is out there, it can kind of be used pretty much any way that a lawyer wants to argue yeah. it. And then it's up to a judge to interpret that law and determine whether the particular case that's got brought forward, that law applies to it or not. 
So does that mean that we're perfectly safe as streamers that we accidentally stream a song like that for a game? Well, no, because uh, here's the thing when it comes to a lot of court cases, the people with the most money typically tend to win. Yep. So it makes it, it still makes it kind of concerning. Uh, it's something, uh, if, if you are interested in it, I recommend checking out uh, a YouTube channel called Legal Eagle. Uh, Mad props to this guy. He's an actual lawyer. Uh, he does work uh, personally in uh, IP type realm. So he actually has some knowledge in this and he's going to do a larger video about that particular topic. Uh, now, continuing on similar type talk it, topic, uh, the same senator, Tom Tillis, uh, again, North Carolina Republican, uh, he is saying, hey, the DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, 1999, it's 20 years old. Now, I don't know if you've been around as long as I have been, Sonny, but damn it, the internet's changed a lot the last 20 years. Your teeth just fell out. You want to pick those up? Yeah, I was say, thank you, Sonny. I, I, was, I, was, I was having trouble talking without them. Hey, Pepper's Farms want their job uh, back. Yeah, right? Uh, but yeah, like 20 years ago, the concept of like, you know, YouTube reacts and, you know, Let's Play streams and, you know, all these things that are going on in the internet, this stuff didn't exist back then. And uh, Tom Tillis is basically saying, hey, a couple of things. We need to redo the whole copyright system and get it out. Uh, I believe it's currently under like the treasury. He says like bring it out underneath the treasury and have, uh, you know, set some people that are more directly in control of it and, you know, uh, set up a bureaucracy around it. I don't know if I totally agree that the copyright system needs to be revamped, but okay. Uh, but he also is saying, hey, yeah, the DMC is antiquated. It's past due for modernization. I can kind of get that. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that I like the way the direction he's going, but it is 20 years old and this technology has changed a lot in the 20 plus years that has been around. And it probably does need some modernization. It does need some looking at. And it, some of it is to better protect those that are doing content that should be considered free use where it is, de you know, demonstratively changing the original work, uh, whether it's through criticism or parody or through the various other methods of free use. Uh, it'd be nice to, you know, make sure that that gets properly written in there. Uh, Cause it is very vague right now, but he's saying, yeah, it, it, it needs to be rewritten. Uh, he talks about, uh, you know, decreasing the specificity for copyright holders, that's kind of concerning. And basically what that means is that if to do a copyright claim, you have to be very specific on the claim that you're making and the copyrighted material that was, you know, in violation here. Uh, so decreasing the specificity, putting a lot more power in the copyright holders hands can be a little concerning, especially again, when you talk about court cases, People with the most money are the people who are going to win, typically. Uh, uh, but he says, he says, really, it's, you know, he wants to put together bipartisan legislation that targets commercial for-profit streaming piracy services. Well, I, I can kind of understand that part of it. If it's written well enough to target that instead of targeting the casual streamers, I can kind of get behind this. He says, uh, the proposed, proposed legislation would not cover normal practices by online service providers. That's not us. Uh, it's the ISPs uh, and, and Twitch and YouTube. Good faith business disputes, non-commercial activities, still doesn't cover us yet, uh, or in any way impact individuals who access pirated streams or unwittingly stream unauthorized copies of copyrighted works. That last part still, that kind of starts to cover us when you're like, oh, this song is playing on the game I'm playing as I do commentary about it. So that unintended or, uh, you know, unwittingly stream unauthorized copies. Uh, he says those people, uh, those individuals would not be affected. 
So he's just drafting it. It's still not even at the point where anybody's voting on it. Uh, it's a ways out there. Um, if this is something that is concerning you, uh, please look into it because there currently is, a, you can comment on this. If, if you're a streamer who's listening, if you're concerned, anything else like that, uh, there's intellectual underscore property at tillis.senate.gov where comments will be uh, solicited and listened to and read, hopefully. Uh, but those comments close by March 5th 2021 so only three months yeah it's a good thing to do i mean it's and especially you know following up with that also you know if you're concerned about any of this stuff like we as voters in the u.s have the right and the ability to try to change those things by voting um so if you feel like this is something that you don't want to ever see in the future then go vote and you know make sure that person doesn't have the ability to do that in the future but without a voice uh, there's no way to really make anything different so uh, as a streamer, uh, and, you know, definitely go sign that or go make a comment. Yeah, and voting, like he may be not up to term for vote for years at this point, while voting absolutely is important. In the meantime, don't forget that, yes, you can reach out to your representatives. Yeah. Even if you're not part of North Carolina, this is supposed to be a federal law. Right. So anyone can reply to that email and talk to, you know, say the concerns of like, Hey, I want to make sure that free use is protected here because, uh, especially for monetization, because there's literally people who have built businesses around this yeah. stuff and they're not super rich. They, a lot of them barely scrape by, but they're doing the thing they love and they're not, they're certainly not intentionally trying to like violate copyright law. And they certainly try to, be cognizant for the most part to put it Some to put it in a basic term that. any of you content creators that are listening uh, this is something that is going to directly affect you uh, whether it's a video of a game that you've already you know been playing and you're just highlighting your own video uh, there's a lot of content creators that i watch that give you know tips and tricks on how to play a game uh, like you know, video game donkey's a big one um, you know uh, uh, some some of those cons a big one for at least for rocket league and it's like all of that stuff those are the kind of things that are going to be affected by this if you know and then i mean how it's going to turn out we don't really know yet but those are the things that are going to be affected so if you watch these type of stream or these type of content creators like these are the things that will be you know discussed so if you're if you feel strong about that make sure you at least go say something speak up yeah it's interesting because it could really lead to a lot of things that we rely on being missing like if you think like if if it's as broad as it ends up being to the way like you can't really even use some gameplay footage or something in a video um because that's that's copyrighted material and if that's the case like and somebody's trying to report on like some pre-review material that you know they haven't gotten specific authorization for and they can't do that which as we've seen not being able to to reshare those things as much as possible, um, which again we'll talk about later, can lead to some very very negative consequences because it, it, we kind of live in a day and age where buying a video game isn't what it used to be. It's like, not. I, I didn't have any fear or worry, I guess, going to buy like a game on the PS2 or the PS3 for the most part. Or like, Pokemon if Red. I was buying like Ratchet and Clank like deadlocked i wasn't like oh no but like what if the game's not finished <laughs> like what <laughs> like you, you kind of you buy things with confidence and knowing that <laughs> what if it's an, getting another et get. <laughs> um, yeah so like if if those things get hindered even further then this just gives a lot of these companies that are already being shady as hell more grounds to be shady as hell because now they're protected by additional laws where they can be like, oh, well, it's not our fault you didn't get to see all these things. I mean, they were out there in some shape or form on this one tiny channel that nobody found. Um, sorry, like, no. our bad. Um, so it's it's got a lot of a lot of negative connotation to it and uh, potential just negative impacts that we we wouldn't want. Yeah. 
So it's important. Go go write a senator. Go write a representative. Go go comment on this if you feel strongly, and if or if you watch content that you feel is good. I mean, there's I mean, outside even the video game world, there's a lot of content on YouTube. Even like I, I we always joke like at work and stuff. We say YouTube Academy, right? And uh, and that's really why because you can learn pretty much anything you want, and and a lot of that's based on you know people using some sort of copyrighted material, showing you how to use it, or you know playing footage of like a video how to do something. So. Oh. <clears throat> Go do it. Um, boy, uh, this next story. <laughs> this is this is probably the story of the year. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's intense. It's pretty. Won't take a sip. Pretty weird. Uh, I don't even know how to approach this. It's um, not even April. Well, it's know, been very it's, weird it's fucking... this whole last few years for the marketing from this this so, thing. I guess I'm not even sure how to pronounce this. Yeah, there's that too. As if, <laughs> as if the hardware industry for gamers and in general in tech hasn't been just fucked enough in 2020 in terms of just the stupid amount of shit that either has happened in it or has been announced. Um, well, there's more. Uh, two days ago, um, some articles came up with reference to what I guess I'm going to call, as a full name, the Kentucky Fried Console. That's... The Kentucky Fried Console. KF Console, or KFC Onsole. How, I don't know. I'm going to pronounce it the right? Kentucky Fried Console. Thanks uh, um, Thanks to Tickle for sending this one in. Yeah, th- thank you, Tickle, for, for sending this in. I, I think we'll... I don't know. It's it's confusing to me, <laughs> but um, essentially, um, KFC, as in the people that make fried the chicken, fucking terrible <laughs> fried chicken. Um, <laughs> though I do love yeah. their popcorn chicken, even though it's not popcorn chicken. It's it's not chicken, anyways. It's something. Um, they've announced a console, and they tweeted the console war is over, and then they did an introduction trailer for the KF console, um, which they say. Um, is stat-based, as in hardware specification-based, much more powerful than the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, um, and has an additional function, which I'll get into in a moment, um, that neither of the other two consoles have. Or for that fact, um, to my knowledge, any game-playing system really has. Um, I mean, maybe, actually... Technically, smart fridges that you can play some Skyrim base on. games yeah. on oh God. have <laughs> somewhat <laughs> similar yeah. functions to them, it's true. but in the reverse. Um, anyways, the uh, the console is touted to have um, a one terabyte NVMe SSD from Seagate. Um, it has a what they call a top end Intel CPU. Um, it seems like it's some form of an i9, and something that I hadn't yeah. heard of before is an Asus hot swappable mini GPU, which is apparently based on one of the articles that I've read, potentially NVIDIA based. Um, so it's supposed to be able to play games at 4K, 240 frames per second, which sounds like bullshit to me, but whatever, we'll, we'll see. Um, the extra function this thing has is I'm just going to put this in in the most basic way possible. It has a drawer, like a meat drawer to keep your meat warm. (laughs) You can put like chicken in it. I assume is the idea. It's a little, little drawer that comes out. You can put your, your KFC popcorn chicken in it, if you will, and close that shit. And it'll stay nice and toasty. I can't imagine. I mean, if he, if he got an I nine in there, it got a GPU. It's a small little thing. I mean, that heat should be useful for something, right? Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been trying to find, like after I saw this story, I was trying to find if this was bullshit or not. And to be totally honest, I don't know. Like, I can't tell if I'm being onioned or if like this is just legit because there's nothing contradicting it in terms of like nobody's come out yet and been like, we're just fucking with you. Like Christmas fools. Well, we figured we'd do it early. Well, that's the thing. Well, and everybody <laughs> I mean, the first the first this came out was right before the PS5 launched. Yeah. It was one of the first time I heard this. Yep. And and it was just, it was just, oh, that's funny. It's a joke, right? It's like an April Fool's type thing, like you were saying, <laughs> Bruno. And I heard it back then. 
<clears throat> and then I didn't hear anything until just like this week. And then all of a sudden, like the site that I have up is Cooler Master's site. Oh my God. Because Cooler Master is actually helping produce this. And it uses this Intel nuke, you know, this NUC, which is, um, it's, it's basically a computer on a card. So it's got the processor on there uh, and it plugs into a back back plane. It's got, you know, it, it's like a motherboard and processor and memory all on a single card. And then it just plugs in back plane, which then your GPU plugs into it. If you look, if you look at this, this wireframe, <laughs> crazy ass fucking uh, diagram here, you can see it's got like the nuke right below that warming drawer. <laughs> And then below at the bottom, it's got that GPU. I mean, this isn't just, the craziest thing we've seen this year. I mean, Xbox made a fridge. So like, yeah, and, and but is, the fridge was just a fridge. technically possible. The, the thing that, top. that confuses that top, me is like from the pictures of like the drawer itself, I don't see any heavy insulation on this thing and heating food creates moisture. Yeah. And moisture is very fucking bad. For process. Right. And what I've read, though, that well, it's, I mean, it's actually this, got its own two different ventilation systems, one for the drawer and then one for the actual like CPU. So it's supposed I, to be. Yeah. Separated. And if you look at if you look at this picture too, the drawer seems to have like a glass insert in it, too. To I keep, fucking because because it's because it's not just moisture from heating the food. It's drippage. That I'm, could, I could swear. You, could, could you imagine if, cleaning Chicken grease out of your seat. I mean, I just can't wait to play if cyberpunk then, on this on this little. Nuke. If this thing takes off, I'm not even joking because I I'll, I I won't I won't write off anything anymore. The dumbest shit succeeds nowadays. So if this somehow takes off, and like in 2024, people are talking about, or even we are talking about, <laughs> the console war between Nintendo. Sony, Microsoft, and Kentucky Fried Chicken Corporation. I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Get ready. Like if I'm playing The Elder Scrolls I mean, 6 and it's on a fucking KF console. Well, the thing is, I mean, it's it's already How awesome is that? It's already spec to be way better than the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So saying that already, because we talked about those consoles in pretty much detail. So what's the cost? Right. What's the cost, you know, right? The detail we talked about those consoles, these are basically, you know, PCs at this point. And if they're having issues already with those, and we're talking this is supposed to be 10 times better than that. Like, I man, I don't know. This is interesting. Well, it's, it's not going to be 10 times better. It's a PC. It's not a console. Yeah. It's uh, unless they, the, the most they're going to have is some kind of, windows fricking skin that is like white and red and got Colonel Sanders all over it for backgrounds. Let but me, it's essentially a PC. Uh, I mean the, the it's, it's using I nine, which means that the, the SSD here is only going to be PCI three. So there's only, so the, the speed of the, of the SSD is going to be the 10 times slower saying- than the current consoles. The reason why I'm saying it's like a PC is weird is because it's literally called the KF console. Yeah, there's yeah. that too. Well, it's still, it's still PC. Also, the, the one of, like there's, there's a lot of things <laughs> that bother me about this. One of the main things that's pissing me off is 4K, 240 frames per second. Listen, it's 2020 and a lot of shit's gone down. Nvidia already tricked the whole world about 100 fps 4k gaming with their next generation nvidia rtx 3090 and guess what it was bullshit it was absolute bullshit so i don't know how the hell these guys are touting 4k 240 frames per second when we're getting like 80 up to to be fair it says up to 240 frames per second I'm sure that they could put like a small version of a 3080, maybe a 3080 super in here and like whenever that's released. And I'm sure that they'll put Quake 2 in that motherfucker and they'll get 240 frames per second. out. It's going to be like nothing but mobile games. They're going to play like Among Us at 240 frames per second. And they're they're, they're not saying everything's going to run 
at 240. It's just this up to 240 frames per second. So stupid. I, I hate I mean, that. but what's crazy, though, and like I said, so it's the marketing that KFC has. Like, I don't know who took over marketing for them, but <laughs> it's a genius. Like he this person, he or she is a genius because, I mean, think about all the advertisements we've seen for commercials for KFC over the last years. Like, it's been very random commercials, like even at different main actors, like coming out as Colonel Sanders and like just having these really weird scenarios like. So whoever this is, like, I think it's genius. Whether this actually comes out and actually is a thing or not, I, I doubt. But I mean, maybe. I feel like, but it's just I feel like the wild. same person is doing KFC's advertising as is doing Wendy's advertising. Because both yeah. of those companies have gone in a weird direction. Oh, and Arby's. Arby's has, like, this weird ad campaign now, if you haven't seen it, where they take the packaging and they make, like, like nerd culture themed shit out of it. No, I haven't seen this. It's it's really interesting. Like they'll like they'll make like like a Gundam out of it or like an X Wing, like weird shit like that. That is crazy. Oh man, where do we well, go? Okay. Where do we so, go from here? Well, I know where we go. We go to the unexpected. Because damn it, Mike. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, you're like, oh, I don't know. It's going to be released in one week. We'll never have the weekly update again. And then you didn't know the shit storm that was going to hit the Internet. Yep. And the shit storm continues because this, this Christmas is tomorrow. On a Friday, this this is not a week for news. And shockingly, we're actually finding news out there. But unshockingly, because of the shit storm that has hit because of this game that we're about to talk about, uh, there is still news coming out for it. Uh, we broke news last week. Like we, we, and we'll talk about that a little bit today, but we, uh, you know, sat there and had news that was breaking right as we were starting the podcast and we were able to report on it. And we didn't even have the full information there, but at least we got the basics out there. Uh, that's right. I'm talking about, that reoccurring segment that we have that Zeissia loves his favorite game of the century. That's right. It's time for Zeissia's Cyberpunk 2077 weekly update. So weekly update is turning into like yearly update. I feel like since the game came out, I feel like it's already been a year of like shitstorm and and right. and bad reviews. It's only been two weeks. <laughs> it's only been two weeks. So we kind of talked about a little bit of this uh, emergency board call or recording that we had found uh, last week that they talked to. It sounded like the, the board users were talking to the, the head of the executives of CD Projekt Red about, you know, their their investment takes, like what's going to happen based on you know, the reviews that were coming out and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we then we were reported on literally began, like he was saying, as the podcast started, that uh, PlayStation actually removed the game from the PlayStation store and that is really unheard of. I mean, even No Man's Sky, which was kind of backed by Sony a little bit at the beginning there because it was a launch game. But it's uh, it was not even that game as bad as it was in a situation was even removed from the PlayStation store. So, uh, I mean, sources tell me that there was one other game that Sony pulled from the PlayStation, and that was Afro Samurai 2. Which, A, was a terrible game, but B, was nowhere near the size of the game that cyberpunk is it's it's like or even as anticipated it's 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 not even close to being like the same concept yeah it's so with that being said from last week uh we you know kind of went through the the news that they had for that and what we also found out and, I, and we can't we haven't been able to determine if the source of this is the same call or if it's a separate meeting um, but there was also reports of some of the head developers um, basically having a meeting with the executive team and kind of like in an uproar talking about how they knew that this was not ready. The game was not in a position to be released, that you know they needed more time and that they really were forced to release this game knowing that this game would not be ready. And, and the executive team just didn't care. They just needed to get it out. And, and now hearing that after obviously the, the flack that we've gotten from this game, uh, it's pretty concerning because, you know, from what we heard from the executive board meeting the week before and then now hearing this, I don't know if it's the same 
um, scenario or not, it's uh, it is still very concerning. And uh, it seems that there's obviously internal issues that they're trying to discuss because of the developers along with the management. And uh, and it seems like not everybody's on the same page. It's it's very concerning, uh, which will lead into some other things in a minute. Um, but, yeah, that's that's kind of what we have been hearing now. And uh, it doesn't seem like a, one of the reports is frustrated and angry staff is what was reported um, from the City Project Red management yes. um, during that video call. So. Uh, obviously more to come. But, uh, I love, I, I love the fact that they sit there and, the de- and you know, the developers that worked on this said to management, Hey, don't you think it's a little hypocritical that we're making a game that <laughs> is like against corporations and like <laughs> corporate mismanagement and, and corporate oppression. And yet you're asking us to do a shitload of crunch time. Yeah, I mean, and that and that's the whole which thing. is exactly what one of the developers said in their internal developer executive meeting. Yeah, they had literally like portrayed like made themselves into what they try and like speak about in their game, which. I don't know, I like game wise, I don't even think they do a really good job of. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it makes it fall a little flat. Yeah, uh, but going going from that not so great news to somewhat better news, uh, it has been a week and we have had not one, but two patches from CD Projekt Red to try to make Cyberpunk 2077 better for various people. Uh, this actually started as a different news story. This started as a news story of like kind of a public service announcement of, hey, be aware that save games were getting corrupted that once they got over a certain size and that size was in some ways directly related to the number of items that you were carrying, uh, that your save could corrupt. Uh, this happened to you, right, Bruno? Yep. Uh, so Bruno lost hours and hours because his main save got corrupted. Uh, but now they just recently, I think, Oh, was it yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. Mm Mm-hmm. Yesterday, 23rd, released patch 1.0.6 that uh, corrects the save game bug that they have. However, it does not recover the corrupted saves you already have. All it does is prevent further saves from being corrupted. Uh, Also included in this patch is some additional memory management that should reduce the game's crashing on memory limited <coughs> consoles, including the original PS4 and the original Xbox One systems. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then 105 came out and was supposed to make uh, some additional improvements as well. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't actually played it since either of these patches. So came I played I after 105 on and one of the things that I was upset about with 105 is that there was somebody on Reddit who was a developer, not working for them, but just a regular developer. And I'd found a file that he thought was directly related to some of the, the uh, resources needed, like the, the file that configures what resources are used for each type of game. And uh, it's, it apparently they came out with the patch saying that this had, uh, no effect. This was a file that had nothing to do with anything. Uh, they removed it since then. Uh, has uh, but literally any uh, enhanced performance that you saw was basically a placebo. Uh, nothing actually changed. Uh, and I have a hard time believing this. I mean, it's just because. I mean, not only I wasn't the only person who read you know the Reddit and did the thing and and also saw a performance in pre- increase from this. Um, you know, so whatever we'll chalk it up as a as a, a lie, I guess. No, I mean. The, the speculation do they think, comes back to go ahead. Do they think we don't have frame counters on our video cards? Well, here's 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 what what I think the most likely culprit is, if that was actually not doing anything, is that the people who came out after that are right. And that really what CD Projekt said in not so many words is this file does nothing because the performance increase you saw was from closing your game and then opening it again because our game is terrible <laughs> and has a massive fucking memory leak. You idiots. Yeah. Because really, if you leave the game open and just let it run, it it does have a really, it di- or it did, I don't know if it's a little better now, I haven't really paid too much attention, it, it did slowly eat more and more and more and more memory. There is a memory leak or potentially multiple sets of them within Cyberpunk. 
So it could have very well been that the import performance of people were seeing as they were playing for a couple of hours, and they're like, oh yeah, like my frames per second, the last time I had it open, were like 37. And then they did the change. It was like, wow, now it's 49. And then they play for a little while, and they stop paying attention to their frame counter, and their frame counter is already back down in the 30s. So that could very well be a possibility. I mean, that their game was just shit in a different way. It's, it's funny to say that because, like, I did close out the game. Like, I would play the game, <clears throat> see how terrible it was, close it out, and I wasn't playing for hours and hours. And then once I made the change, it went to like like way better, like like a 15 to 20 percent increase of what I was at. And what's interesting though, for this not to have any effect. Uh, and the guy actually said this when he made the Reddit post. He said, uh, it will crash. When you close the game, it'll say the game is crashed. And But he's like, I haven't noticed any actual issues with that yet. Um, so for a file to not do anything, how does it make the game crash, give it that error saying it's crashed, when it doesn't actually do anything? So I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me either, which... I don't know, you know, maybe just a weird cover up thing because they felt it made them look worse. Yeah, but. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, now the file is gone completely, so we can't even look at it. It's the patch has already overrode it. Uh, one thing to come back on, uh, not a patch, but something that was affecting me uh, was with the, uh, the the F key, having to use the F key hard coded. It's just what you have to use. You can't really change it within the game. Um, one of the big things with that is uh, they everybody uses a separate keyboard, like a, a keyboard layout that they use. Different companies have different ones. Uh, in this case, uh, they used like the 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 wording was like or the the the, uh, the way that they do it is like I N underscore and then the key letter so like capital A capital B whatever capital F in this case uh, the problem with that is when you're using keys like I do which are not standard keys like your numpad keys uh, some of that stuff can kind of get squirrely I mean because it depends on how they name it you know the initial caps everything's case sensitive so you have to make sure things right and if you can't find the specific key that you're looking for that somebody already they already used it somewhere then you're kind of just on your own uh, and what i've found in the past with other games is they all kind of use this unique keyboard that they come up with that the studio may use for multiple games or whatever but that's what they use and uh, so it doesn't work like if you played this and you tried to play like assassin's creed it may not be the same keyboard layout so you can be able to modify your keys that way um, so what i was able to find was actually someone who posted uh, the same keyboard layout for witcher 3 and had all of the key mapped out, even for Xbox controller, to even map all of those out. And uh, I was able to find a key that I could use on my numpad, and uh, and I was able to use it. And I thought, you know, being Witcher 3, probably the same keyboard, and sure enough, it was. Um, so I was able to get that mapped out. The game is playing a lot better now that I can actually pick up things and close things without having to pick up my hand from the, the mouse. Um, so that's made my quality of life better. Uh, but ultimately, uh, it's still something they haven't patched. Um, and they did, I think, add uh, the menu and journal and stuff. I don't I don't think I don't think it was there before. It is there now. I noticed that. Um, but it's I didn't leave either. either I didn't there pay were, attention or I just didn't notice. There were a lot of little like secret fixes that they didn't they didn't put in, like just like sly, like we corrected this, but they didn't actually list it. For example, one thing that I noticed, and I, it's fucking weird that this bothered me so much, but it did. The game had like one fucking train in the entire game that ran at a certain fucking time right. in this massive city with dozens of train, like monorail tracks suspended above the city. Only one little piece of it. Now, they're everywhere. Oh, there are really? trains on so many tracks now. Just You just see them streaking across the city on these giant suspended tracks That's and hilarious. it honestly pleases me to no end <laughs> that they're there because they do add a certain amount of extra filling ambiance. to the city yeah like the ambiance changes because before there were just these weird cement looking suspended structures in midair that did jack shit and now like you just you just see them go by you still can't get on them from what i've seen other than i've been able to jump on one by bugging my way up to it um, but you can't get inside of them and ride them, but they're there. Hey, that's yeah. It's just a little, a lot of things they've added in oh, a lot of weird things, and, yeah. and I'm, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily complaining. I mean, they needed to do some patches and they even patched something. They said they wouldn't even patch like the, the eight megabyte, uh, file. They said that it wouldn't even happen. Cause they, they remember they said, I, I said that that was going to change because the fucking ticket got opened. The forum post started and people were like, listen, Eight megabytes is the limit. This is bad. And the official response to their Zendesk support ticket was, we have no intentions on making any modifications to this in the near future, as this should only be impacting people using duplication glitches, which was bullshit. Yeah. It was impacting people who 
were shitlord crafters that wanted to make millions of dollars, like me. <laughs> so that's just somebody playing the game the way their game systems allow you to play the fucking game. We're not ab abusing an exploit. We're just taking items from vending machines, crushing them, making weapons, and then selling them in bulk after holding on to them. That should not negatively impact us. So when they said that, I was like, I give them a week. A week before this has hit so much shit for them that they're going to just be forced to change it. And sure as shit, like five days later, they're like, ah, hot fix, guys. We changed it. It's no longer eight megabytes. My bad. Yeah. And I it's saw like, a good. comment on Reddit. It was like, yeah, spoiler. It's now 8.1. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So it's like boot my save. This save is corrupted. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things like that. And, and like they said, they only they only promised us like one real big say or one big hotfix before the holidays, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've already gotten to I'm not saying that we probably yeah. won't get any more this year, um, but it wouldn't surprise me. Before the end of the year, anyway, it, it would surprise me, but we'll see. Um, but I mean, I feel like a lot of the stuff we talk about with this game is just bugs. Um, yeah, pretty much. And I guess before There's I a lot. before I report on what I'm about to say, I should say like I've, I'm probably like 40 something hours into this game. I have many friends who are 60, 80, 90, even 100 hours for two of them into this game. So there, there's a lot of enjoyment to be had. It's just really shitty in a lot of ways right now, and that's not okay. But it's also okay for some people like if, if you're willing to roll with it then you're willing to roll with it and you'll get enjoyment out of it if it's your type of game um it just has a lot of problems and one of them that i noticed early on and now there's there's widespread reporting um is um <sighs> essentially there's a bug where you end up seeing your character in third person and it reveals that your character as noted in this Kotaku article, is a shambling monstrosity, which you can see in our video right now. But essentially, for those of you listening to the podcast, you are a headless monster <laughs> with, like, the wacky inflatable arm shit going on. But your guns are literally strapped to your arms. Like, you're not holding them in your hands for the most part. They're strapped to your arms. You have no head, You're like, which is which in my opinion is why you don't really ever see your reflection unless you look in a mirror because you aren't rendered in most occasions. You're this weird demonic presence upon the world that is malformed and you have weird guns for arms. Like <laughs> just the weirdest shit. Yeah, it's pretty strange. And yeah, like if you look at your shadow in the game, it looks kind of wonky. And the reason it seems to look kind of wonky is because it's like a, like a, compiled render of what your character should look like. Oh, I know where this is your character at now. <laughs> actually looks fucking terrifying. You're headless. You, you, your joints don't work properly. You jump weird. You move weird in general. And your guns are just strapped to your arm. There's a lot of things that display how wonky this stuff is. For example, there's a really good clip of the shadow of somebody holding a sniper rifle. And they both, they essentially have their, their one hand on the barrel and one hand like near where the trigger is. And they're holding it like down in front of them, like like kind of in the middle of their torso. But it's like a giant power sniper rifle. And that's that's literally how it displays in the shadow. It's all messed up. There's a lot of jankiness behind your own character model. Um, so if the promise of multiplayer exists, but don't expect it anytime soon. <laughs> Cause... And to give to give credit to the video is by YouTube. Uh, content creator by the name of Sneakum, maybe S N I K M. Uh, only 32 subscribers. Go out and give them some love for their uh, wonderful video that uh, they created that Kotaku had actually highlighted in their article. <clears throat> 136,000 views on that thing. Let's get some more views on it and help yeah. that content creator out. <clears throat> yeah, for yeah, sure. it's 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 nuts. So there's there's a lot of bugs in this game. They definitely overpromised and misled people on this game, which is probably going to lead to some real negative shit. And that negative shit was actually reported on earlier this week as words already came out that they were thinking that there's going to be some sort of class action lawsuit against CD Projekt Red for 
the misleading uh, and also of uh, the investors um, losing money basically on a promise that was made to them that this game would you know have so much content and be the next you know coming of whatever. Uh, and it's not. Uh, so actually, right before the podcast, as again, breaking news, um, we've actually gotten confirm a confirmation that the class action lawsuit is actually happening. Um, and it's been filed against Project City Red by a law firm called Rosen Law Firm. Uh, they're a global investor rights law firm, and they're seeking to get uh, to recover damages from City Project Red's investors using the federal security laws. And uh, what it's basically saying is that um, CD Project Res investors have suffered damages as a result of the blowback since release, uh, which has included the, uh, being uh, being pulled from the PlayStation Store uh, and then full refunds being offered to the, the for the game for the various sellers, uh, including the CD Project Red themselves. So it's um, they're apparently a, a larger uh, global investor, which I think we were talking about earlier that uh, they really don't have a whole lot of reviews and there's really not a lot of cases they've done. But apparently they're the ones leading this up. Seems like they probably heard the story and was like, we'll go grab that as fast as we can. Um, so the the interesting part of this, yeah, they're going to get sued. Uh, this is a you know something that's going to get presented and it's going to go to court uh, potentially. And uh, if by chance CD Projekt Red does lose this, um, this is a huge uh, step, a huge bound that a lot of people and a lot of companies are going to have to deal with going forward because uh, yeah it seems like they're kind of the guinea pig for this they're, they're the fall guys that are having to to really you know have playstation take their game down and do all the stuff because yeah there's a lot of other bad games out there that you know I, I could compare like i've had fun with this game i could compare a lot of other games that were really bad compared to this and not as bad as is this um, but if if this actually makes it and it turns into they lose um, going forward, a lot of game makers are going to have a lot more to deal with when it comes to either early access or releasing games, um, you know, that are supposed to be finished uh, and having day one patches and whatever. I'm looking at you like EA and I'm looking at you Bethesda, uh, all these games that are coming out that are just, you know, not really polished by the time that they release. I'm I'm looking at Star Citizen. Oh, let's not even go like there. Funding back in you know, like 2010. 10 years of funding for this game, like $340 million of like people putting money into it. 1 million plus like individuals putting money into that game. And, uh, you know, just recently, uh, they, they said, Oh, by the way, we're going to delay the, the, the spinoff game, not even the main game. We're going to delay the spinoff game even further. Uh, it's just, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for them to have a class. Yeah, they got and a if, million people for that class. And if this too. happens, that potentially could be one of those what we see one of those game makers that could potentially go to court for that as well. Uh, and it would just be interesting because yeah. if they do lose at the, the what type of severity did they lose? Is it like, you know, how bad is this going to be? Because that could be a big difference for when it comes to Star Citizen. And uh, it's funny because like we mentioned that today there was an article posted that, you know, the uh, the head developer, head CEO or whatever for Star, uh, Star Citizen came out. And basically uh, you could tell he was watching the news. He's up to par with what CD Projekt Red did. And he his statement was essentially a, uh, you know, we're going to release the game when we feel our heart and soul is ready to release this game. Unlike, you know, other companies that may do that early. And he's just basically stabbing CD Projekt Red like, yeah, see, because of them. Like, that's why we're taking so long to make this game. And it's like, obviously, that's in their case, not the case. Like we they're definitely way behind not making the game the way that even we talked about before about them making a roadmap for the roadmap. Like that's that's the kind of shit they're spending their time on doing rather than actually making the game. So if you're a Star Citizen fan, I'm sure you're having fun at some at some sort of level because you've already bought it and you're you're just making yourself feel OK with that. But it's not it's not OK. So we'll, we'll just have to see how this goes with that uh you know i legit had forgotten the making the roadmap for the roadmap bullshit that they had done it's yeah star citizen it's it's wild but so even with the lawsuit like i said coming out today um as of 5 p.m eastern um on uh you know december 24th 2020 um even with that uh cyberpunk 2077 has sold over 13 million copies as of december 20th despite the refunds uh so 
you know, like we said, we are still enjoying the game. Yes, there are bugs. Yes, there are issues. I've actually watched, um, like I was talking about video game donkey earlier, but he put out a video on a review of kind of cyberpunk. And if you ever watched his type of videos, they're very uh, funny, very, you know, like it, it's informative, but also funny. Uh, and, uh, but I watched the video and every single thing that he had an experience, I have never experienced in my game. And, uh, yes, I'm on playing on PC. Yes. I'm playing on a higher end PC. Um, but, like, I also, when I was talking to Demir in here earlier that, you know, well, I don't see these things. The only thing I could talk about was like the, the phone, the cell phone thing. Um, but we made a good point is, Oof. you know, I don't play the game like Demir. That's just bad design. Yeah. Well, the cell phone thing is bad design. But I don't play games like Demir does. Like, he wants to break the game. He wants to to shoot shit and get it get it going, blowing it up. And, and I'm not like that. When I've been playing on C- when I've been playing Cyberpunk, um, I've been very, you know, cautious on walking on the streets. I don't shoot anybody randomly. I, I stick to the story missions. I you know, I don't try to break the game. I try to really make this immersion like real. And uh, and I think because of that, I haven't really experienced a lot of the, the bugs, um, which is like I think what he said was, you know, once you start trying to break the boundaries of just normal gameplay, uh, the game kind of reacts really bad to that. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's the Cyberpunk Weekly Update, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more stuff out here soon. But uh, at least for now, that's what we got. So uh, for right now, we're going to take a break, uh, hang out for just a minute and listen to a word from our sponsors. And we're back. So this is where we talk about what we've been playing this week. And uh, this week we played Gears of War 5 or Gears 5 technically on uh, Xbox Game Pass mm-hmm. free. We played the new Hive Buster DLC, uh, which was not my choice. This was a this was a Phoenix Nova uh, weekly pick and uh, it was actually pretty fun. I'm actually pretty excited. I haven't played the game. I haven't played Gears since Gears 2. And uh, and, I, and I wasn't really a huge fan of those games. It just third person. I'd rather play first person. Just uh, it was interesting. It's fun. Uh, but Gears 5 was actually pretty entertaining. Uh, it was bas- basically a like playing an aliens movie like the aliens, like the second movie uh, and having to go in and just kind of just blow shit up and shoot and shoot and shoot. And then even when we thought the shooting was over, there was more shooting. And uh, and even like there's just no break. Like you don't really get a break. It's just well, constant nonstop battle. And it's not it's not the shooting. Uh, the, the third person perspective really helped with the fact that, you know, we're playing Die Hard or we're playing Lethal Weapon. I mean, we're playing this this over the top bombastic action movie type thing. Uh, I mean, before we ended and we only played like an hour and a half, I think, yeah. uh, as opposed to our normal two hours, because <coughs> someone <coughs> couldn't bother to <coughs> download. Hey, I'm sorry that I didn't this. realize when I have to hit install, I have to install, then install again once I open the game and then also install the game once I'm in. There's a lot of games. That Man, do it was that. a lot of downloading, a lot of installing. Uh, it was annoying. It, 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 and it's this was DLC that we played. The <laughs> DLC, which is called Hive Buster, is uh, part of uh Gears 5, it is $19.99 on stream or on Game Pass for free, like Zycia had said. But at one point, we were literally riding this giant gear-shaped steel door. And it was our boat as we floated down a river of lava. Pretty much. And getting stuck on things... And shooting bad guys that were on the shore or above us on trees that had gone over this river of lava. And it's it's just over the top, exciting. It it didn't matter when we died. We didn't we just got right back in there. Zeissia got kicked from the game once or twice. Yeah, I was able to join uh, right we, back we, in we, while you were playing. Yeah, short, short. Yeah, while I was playing, it was the one time it was like the fourth time we were going up against this boss. And without him there, we actually were able to pass through the boss. Uh, I see what uh, you did there. Us being me and the two other computer helpers. Uh, it's three player. It's co-op. This this DLC is cooperative play, three player, up to three player, I should say. God, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I like I like Gears 5 had some problems in it. There was very slow storytelling they tried to kind of make an open world out of it, but they didn't do a very good job of it. In fact, it had the opposite problem of cyberpunk. Cyberpunk's got like 
icons vomited all over the map and there's and you don't know where to go next. And Gears 5 was the exact opposite. Icons only showed up if you absolutely needed to go there. And that was the only thing on the map. So uh, the campaign seemed kind of like a miss, but holy shit, the cooperative looks and just played extremely excitingly fun. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, it's free right now. And and that's one of the games we talked about with the Xbox Game Pass that depending on the Game Pass you got is the which DLC you're going to get. So because we had Ultimate, we got the High Busters. Um, so whatever you have, just go check and see what's available. But ultimately, it's free. Gears 5 is at least free on the Xbox Game Pass. Um, so you can definitely check it out mm-hmm. there. Uh, I think it's still, what, forty nine ninety nine on a uh, regular. Something like that for Gears, yeah. yeah. And then twelve fifty nine for the down for the DLC. Yep. So yeah, that's what we played this week. Uh, unfortunately, Demiran didn't play with us because he's been kind of tied up on another game. Uh, and I guess you could tell us about that. Yeah. So uh, game of the moment is unfortunately not in the cards for me for a little bit of time. I've been playing World of Warcraft um, a lot, and they released the raid um, castle Nathria. Um, so I. I'm raiding with my guild, who decided that the best days to raid are Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So that's that's just fantastic. <laughs> the other options were Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'm glad that I was able to sway things in at least a different direction on one of those <laughs> days. Right? <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so I've been playing World of Warcraft, new expansion. I mentioned it like a month back when it came out. Um, Now that I've played it for a month, I can say that personally, I believe it to be the best expansion that they have had um, probably since Wrath. Um, It it is really fantastic. It does not feel like a super needy expansion. If you've played World of Warcraft or if you're interested in MMORPGs in general, you'll know that a lot of them are very needy. And what I mean by that is they require an unimaginable amount of time for you to just keep up or be relevant in the game um, and not have to wait like three months for catch up mechanics to come out that lets you, you know, catch up with your friends and play And this game. Really? I'd say that if you have six hours to eight hours a week to offer to it, you can keep up to a point where um, at any given time, you should be able to join almost any content in the game with relative ease, um, which is great. Um, I put a little bit more than eight hours into it a week. Um, but obviously Just a little bit. I really enjoy the game. Um, if you ever have any questions about um, World of Warcraft or MMORPGs in general, because I've played so many of them, feel free to shoot us an email. Um, and, and we'll answer. Yeah. Your I think you can get you. the expansion right now for $40 for the basic expansion. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right. Yeah. And, and, uh, let me, let me tell you, I've been playing World of Warcraft as well, but not the expansion. <laughs> and let me clarify that I've actually purchased the expansion, but uh, they they've made so many changes because like the, the catch up mechanics uh, that Demirin had referenced uh, that you're so long in coming in some of the other expansions. Those are in place right now for people who are starting fresh new characters. So I started a fresh new character. I was playing a lot of Mist of Pandoria, which released eight years ago and i was just like my character played that from like i think level i don't know 15 through level 40 something like that and i had a blast because i was constantly going up in level i went through tons of story content i went all over the place i basically opened up this continent went all the way through it the entire continent which was a lot of missions and I didn't even do all the missions. There was there was like some random like jack hole off to the side with an exclamation. I'm like, screw you. You're under the bridge. I'm like, I'm just going to go on by uh, and had a ton of content. Constantly was busy. Again, I was only playing about six to eight hours a week. Six to eight, not 68. Uh, sure. And was having a blast and was getting my my characters now about to be 45. And I'm going through uh, a different set of content that I haven't played through before, before I get into the current expansion. And I feel like this is amazing because like 
I'm just moving along. I can solo stuff. I've been soloing some dungeons. I don't expect to constantly do that through the new content as much or as easily, but I'm just having a blast. Sometimes have a podca- podcast on the side or something like that. Sometimes I'm actually paying attention to the story of the game, but definitely cool. And the new content, it won't, it, it'll be at all. You can't, you can't solo the, uh, the new dungeons, but it's okay. It's, you know, you'll, you'll find lots one of, of them. You could busy. solo. Well, Torghast is designed that way. Yeah. Yes. But like actual, yes. um, the actual dungeons in the game, um, are generally meant for five people in the current expansions. So, um, yeah. But yeah, like the way the game's designed now is that like they went and they modified everything in this expansion. So all of the old expansions, you can just choose at the beginning of the game when you create your character, which yeah. one you want to play through. Um, and you can just pick up the story from there and like they'll you, you can get a lot of information on like what happened before that point in time. Um, they'll play like cinematics and stuff to bring you up to speed if, if you want to just go into the game client and find them. Um, so like there, there's a lot of information to. uh to get out of it. And there's just a lot of different options for playing the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're interested in MMOs, check it out. Um, definitely. So it's, it's fun. I mean, other than that, obviously I've been playing cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. Um, so again, it's a good game. $60, uh, has a lot of problems though. Uh, right now, if you haven't bought it yet and you're on the fence, Get on the other side of the fence and just wait a couple of months. Yeah, wait like three to six months. And I think you'll be in good shape by that the, point. The pressure is on. So in, as long in as three the company to six months, we will know what what's going to happen with that game. And and my hope is that they will release the two massive updates that they promised in the near future, which is January and February. And the game will be in a better place come just two months from now. Yeah. And I'll stop blowing up my cell phone too. Oh hopefully. God, please. Yeah, that's which by the way, I actually saw a news article on that was somebody complaining about the same thing about how it blows up your cell phone and auto answers. Yeah. I have that yeah. police lady keep calling me over and over and over. That and I don't care. Bothers me a lot less because one of the things that I really hated was I was like, this is such a cheap way to do it. Like instead of making an NPC, you just have this person call me a bajillion fucking times <laughs> until I was randomly walking around in my second playthrough because my first one got corrupted. And I, I like busted into this building and sure as shit, there was the main person that calls you with a bunch of armed guards in like this weird operations center in like a dilapidated building. And like, I was like, what the fuck? So she like exists just out in the real world. There's dialogue with her. There's an entire quest line that goes with her. And I was like, oh, okay. So it bothers me a little bit less because I always assumed that it was their cop out to not creating the NPC was like, oh no, we're just going to like have this fucking NPC blow up your phone every two seconds. But it is really annoying that you can't decline the call. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's weird. Like, and, uh, and not, not only annoying that you can't decline it, but really annoying by the fact that everything in the menu options and how it pops up looks like, you should be able to decline it. Yeah. And even the way they talk when it auto picks up sounds like you could have declined it. it uh, What's uh, technically a way to offset the call. Um, if somebody's calling you, if within like the three second time span you have before it auto answers, if you're in a car, you just run over a bunch of innocent people. It actually cancels the call. Or if you're walking around and you blow somebody's brains out, your guy actually won't answer the phone. And if you do answer the phone and you're talking to the person, you can do those same two things. And your character goes, yo, I'll call you back. And then hangs up the phone because you've just committed murder in the middle of the streets of night city. So you're a little bit <laughs> occupied to be talking. That um, is great. You know, they really missed, missed an opportunity here. They could have had someone call you and up. it'd be like, we're calling about your car warranty. <laughs> like they, they yeah, missed the right? opportunity. They so. got, they got enough spam sitting in all the terminals. That it's not even worth going to the terminals anymore. Yeah. But anyway, we're, we're getting way off yeah. topic. <sighs> uh, a game that uh, I was, I played in the last week uh, that I found very entertaining was monster train. And this is a great little game. It's a, it's a video game that is card based. 
Uh, currently 30% off on Steam, so $17.49 from the normal $25 bucks that it is. Uh, and it says it's a train, but it's more like an apartment complex because it goes up as opposed to like like any normal train goes cross lengthwise. But it's still cool because essentially you're these perfectly normal, unassuming minions of hell. And um, these fucking do-gooder angels keep coming down to like extinguish this ember that you have, which is the last ember of the fires of hell. Uh, and, you know, you're just trying to like, you know, re-extinguish or you know, re-ignite these fires. Uh, you're trying to just rebuild your home after it's been destroyed by these assholes. And uh, you have these you know, like four levels in your train and you got cards that each time you can drop down uh, minions or cast spells. And you got these people that, you know, attack from the first level and they move their way up, except for the bosses sometimes can attack wherever the hell they want. And your embers at the top level. And uh, you as you go through playing the game, you unlock more cards uh, it's got it's got some kind of roguelike slash deck builder type vibe to it where, you know, each time you start the game, you're starting with a deck, but the deck is also stacked with a whole bunch of some basic cards in it. And the whole concept is that, you know, you're going to accrue more powerful cards and you're going to spend different forms of currency to get rid of some of the basic cards so that they don't come up each time uh, so that you got your more powerful cards. You can play pretty quickly without getting rid of all your cheap cards. Uh, and they also got some mechanics of like changing the cost of some of these cards as you go through, which is really cool because you can take a powerful card and reduce the cost of it. Uh, or you can take, a normal card and you can add powers to it that makes it more powerful, but also increase the cost of it. So there's a bunch of fun things you can do. It's really cool mechanics, kind of a, a good flavor to it. I'm not very good at these cards. Like I suck at Hearthstone. I suck at like magic. Uh, and I actually was enjoying myself with this game. So if you don't like those other card games and, and you know, you, you got a little little bit of extra cash to spend this holiday season, you want something interesting, I mean, check it out. Is it multiplayer? At least, at least go look some quick looks and see if it's something you like. Is it multiplayer at all or is it just single player? It is not multiplayer. It's a single player mm -hmm. game. That may be. Uh, actually, no, I take, take that back. Online PvP. So you can play against another player. There you go. That's what I was waiting for. Which was probably where I'd start to suck. Yeah, it. really. That's cool. It has like a mode that you can play. All right. Well, yeah, it's it's definitely super fun. So that's what we've been playing this week. And uh, we're going to get into our short news. Absolutely. This first one, again, was going to be one of the PSAs that I wanted to bring up because uh, it could affect people out there. Not only could it affect people out there, but I actually in one of the podcasts I listened to, I had first learned about this because somebody on there was complaining about it, that they had check disked their SSD and borked their computer, like pretty much bricked it. And then sure enough, later in the week, I see these news stories of like, oh, check disk has a bug in it. They'll screw up SSDs. And, and some people in Germany had also found this. And then I found that, yes, this was official because Microsoft released, hey, if this happens to you, follow these steps and it should hopefully unbreak your PC. And then all the thunder was stolen because now if as long as you do the latest update from Microsoft, it's now fixed. It's no longer a problem. Uh, but still don't check disk your SSD and don't uh, defrag it either. Don't worry. Windows will take care of your SSD automatically. Makes sense. No, none of it makes sense. Well, now makes sense. <laughs> Um, in some other news with reference to a company that I'm very familiar with, and most of you probably are, uh, Riot Games, uh, casually, very casually, has announced what a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, if you don't know Riot Games, the bringers of League of Legends and Legends of Ruterra, 
um, and most recently really Valorant um, or Valorant, how the fuck people pronounce that game, which is Valorant. a like, really large first-person shooter that's blowing up. Um, they've announced an MMORPG or an MMO of sorts that's coming out, which some of the people have wanted. Of course, in the League of Legends universe, this came specifically from one of their VPs, um, Greg Street. He tweeted, I have news. My recent job at Riot has been to help develop the League universe, which we're going to need because it is time. My new job is to kick off a big, some might say massive game that many of you and many rioters have been asking us to create. P.S. We're hiring. And someone said, tell me now, is it an MMO? Will I be able to pick my waifu's clothes and hairstyle? To which he replied, it is an MMO. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, of course, big MMOs are now the market. World of Warcraft, um, Final Fantasy, Elder Scrolls Online, uh, Guild Wars 2. So it's time for something fresh to come out. And it doesn't look like it's going to be a new world. So fingers crossed that this is going to be it. Especially since they already have like this massive amount of like character art and character creation, even lore behind those characters, even if it's kind of crazy lore. They, I mean, they've got a lot of stuff already built for this. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. In other news. And this is news that uh, hilariously enough was something that both Zeissy and I were talking about yeah. during game of the moment. It was funny. I read that, yeah. which was, uh, like, hey, you know, I've got multiple Xboxes and my wife sometimes can play uh, these Xbox Game Pass games on another Xbox as long as I'm not playing. And somebody threw a tweet, which seems to be where a lot of news happens these days. Uh, and for years, uh, basically said, hey, Xbox, are you considering like a family pan for Game Pass, especially for those households that have multiple people and multiple consoles? And Phil Spencer himself uh, replied directly and said, in reference to like, have you considered a family plan? He says, we have. It is something we'd like to do. There is a home console feature for one console household, but for multiple family members with consoles, a family plan would help. Really appreciate the feedback. So while he didn't actually say, yes, it will happen, he said it's something they're considering and it's something that I would definitely do. Yeah. Makes sense, especially if you have a bunch of kids like that. You know, you could pay a little cheaper to have all those things have all the accounts. So, yeah. Um, on to Intel news. Uh, Intel stocks have dropped after reports that Microsoft might be making their own chips. Uh, Intel and Microsoft have had a long-standing business like agreement where uh, Intel supplies Microsoft with a lot of the the actual cpus and in, in general the chipsets that they use in a lot of their environments um however microsoft um an executive at microsoft essentially said that they have some intent to start creating their own chipsets instead of potentially purchasing from other vendors um so that could be I mean, potentially bad news for Intel, obviously, but could be good news for everybody else. Um, it's never a bad thing to have more competition as a consumer um, because obviously the um, CPU market has always been leaning towards one or the other. It's always Intel or AMD. So uh, Apple recently kind of joined in, but only for their own personal computers, like their actual Apple-based PCs. Um, or computer, Apple-based computers. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what Microsoft does with this and how much competition it actually is, since obviously, unlike Apple, Microsoft is Microsoft. So you would assume that that would be more usable for the general person that has like a custom-built computer versus obviously Apple chipsets are not going to end up in anybody's computer right now. No. Yeah. Yeah, likely I actually think this would be uh, for their surfaces and the smaller things like that, because those can use ARM processors already. Yeah, which is something uh, they're not and they're trying to utilize less now, I guess they're moving away from, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, maybe they'll just produce their own ARM based ones. Who knows? 
All right. Well, we'll if uh, if you're a fan of the Mass Effect series, uh, there's some good news for you. Uh, if you watch the Gross. Game Awards uh, last week, uh, they actually had uh, some footage, uh, some teaser trailers of the new Mass Effect game that was coming out. Uh, along with that, uh, people were kind of hesitant because of the fact that we had announced recently, too, that we reported on that uh, Mark Dara and uh, Casey Hudson had actually departed from Bioware. Um Recently, Gamble, uh, Michael Gamble, who uh, is part of Bioware's like top projects, he basically revealed uh, in a tweet that a few Mass Effect veterans returning uh, to the game, including Dusty Everman, Parrish Lee, Brennan Holmes and Derek Watts. And, uh, and if you're not familiar with these people, Game Informer has a little breakdown of who they are. Uh, but Brennan Holmes, uh, he's basically worked on the entire Mass Effect series, uh, the Ma- Ma- uh, Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, Parrish mm-hmm. Lay was involved with the cinematic direct uh, for the Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, Dustin Everman uh, was the key person that came to bring the vision of the normal Nor- original Normandy uh, to life in the Mass Effect series. And uh, he also left back in 2015. Uh, but that's uh, not going to change much there. Um, so, yeah, so it looks like there's some good news for at least the Mass Effect series or at least uh, some oversight, some some kind of. Uh, production like producer level type of information going for the new game uh, but we'll just have to see how it actually turns out yeah that, that sounds like terrible news if i'm being honest i mean <laughs> they've already done so much damage to mass effect and anthem was oof so i can only imagine what they're going to do to this next max effect yep. they're really going to if if they stabbed anthem like 70 times they're going to stab mass effect well like i a mean couple thousand. the bar is pretty low right now with cyberpunk so oh gosh <laughs> The only thing that's going to wash us, wash our memories of cyberpunk is going to be this. Yeah. Um, in, uh, in news Good that I, uh, <laughs> in, in news that's related again to a gaming company that hopefully doesn't disappoint us this time. Um, Sony PlayStation has obviously announced that, um, I mean, or obviously is having some issues with getting PS fives in people's hands. And as such, they have announced that, Unlike the PS3, where you saw support for it kind of disappear almost instantaneously once the PlayStation 4 was released, um, they've, they're, they're trying to assure people that this time around, um, the PlayStation 4 is not just going to lose support. It's, it's, it's like PS4 is not done. There's not, they understand there's not a lot of PS5s on the market. It's going to continue. Um, PS4 support, for now, has no intentions of stopping, which means games apparently will still be releasing for the PlayStation 4. Now, they didn't say this is going to be an indefinite thing, obviously. They just said for the foreseeable future right now, they don't intend to stop supporting the PlayStation 4. So, we'll see. Yeah, and that sounds that sounds different than what they were saying at the beginning of this console generation when they were, like, not so hot on backwards compatibility and, and saying, hey, you should move on to the next generation and... Uh, so it seems like a bit of a flip around. Yeah, you and can't tell people to move on if you've only got 10 consoles to sell. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But it's also up to the game manufacturers to make two versions as well. So, I mean, other than first party, it, although that is Sony's strength, this first party. But other than first well, party, I, I mean, it's I'm in their best interest to do be so. Because like if you don't make two, Install then you're base. selling to a couple million people versus tens of millions of people. So you either do 100. it. Or you suffer. That's the <laughs> 112 million. Yeah, 112 consoles million consoles. PS4. Oh. Uh, continuing PS5, one of the things I complained about the PS5 that the Xbox does a lot better is letting you know which of the games that you're playing are made for the previous generation or the current generation. Uh, and, and very much so, people would like go to buy a new game on the PS5 and it legit would start downloading the PS4 version instead of the PS5 version. There was all kinds of weirdness and confusion around that. Finally, PS5 now has a feature that tells you if you're playing a PS4 version or a PS5 version. Yeah. It literally says, you're about to play the PS4 version of this game. Do you want to switch to the PS5 version of the game? <laughs> Which I guess is a step in the right direction. Uh, my Xbox for Destiny 2, I launched up Destiny 2 and it says, and it literally says, Xbox Series S, Pipe X, and it, it doesn't even give me a choice anymore. It just launches it. Uh, even Gears, it said, hey, do you want to launch uh, this? Uh, do you want to install this on the main thing? Because this is going to be the new version. It just defaulted to it nicely. 
So going back to independent artists, independent developers, uh, we have Concerned Ape, who is behind Stardew Valley, just released uh, one their one his one point five update. Uh, uh, a couple days ago on PC. Uh, the biggest add-in uh, along with, and I mean, there is a long list of uh, fixes in, a, in the release notes and add-ins that this game has now, um, and pretty much like a whole new set of content. Um, but it's uh, the biggest thing with that is the multiplayer. So we've talked about before that the multiplayer is there. Uh, you could actually play with people on the internet as your friends as a co-op. Um, but now what they've added is you can actually do local split screen co-op. Uh, so you can actually pull up, you know, a chair with the two, three other of your friends and you actually run on the same uh, the same farm together. You can either start the game uh, and have the the cabin, the cabins already built for those three people, uh, or you can have uh, Robin the carpenter build those cabins and then add those people in later in the game. Um, along with the new beach farm that you can start off with, like I said, there's a full release of notes uh, on his page, uh, the Stardew Valley page that talks about all the different add-ins, all the new types of uh, vegetables and all kinds of different things. It's, it's really intense. Um, definitely check it out. If you haven't played Stardew Valley, it's one of the games that I love to play. I've wasted so many, I would say wasted. I've, I've spent a lot of hours on this game. Uh, definitely one of my favorites and, uh, it's, it's available on basically any platform. It's, it's very awesome on switch. I'll take it with you. So my God, we're going to lose Zeisha to farming. Again. Basically <clears throat> you're going to lose me to farming again. Let me be honest with you. <laughs> Different type of farming. <laughs> I like uh, range, lastly, so, you know, it, it, I could I could farm for hours or I could do like really intense content for hours. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> uh, lastly, we got my favorite duo of robots who produce EDM music. Daft Punk is turning around and they are releasing basically an anniversary edition of the Tron Legacy soundtrack. Tron Legacy was 10 years ago. Wow. It's like, really? 10 years? There, there are people that only know Tron Legacy as the only Tron that they know. Which is scary. <clears throat> now, so they're re-releasing this. It's not just the original tr tracks. Uh, it also has nine other tracks that were not part of the original soundtrack release. Now, that's not to say this is nine additional new songs. These songs have actually been released in other forms. Uh, even whether it's vinyl release exclusives or iTunes exclusives. But this is the first time that all of these songs are together in one package. And that is going to be through Spotify or iTunes. So go grab it if you want. Awesome. Well, that uh, that actually takes care of our shorts for the day. Uh, the next segment will be for emails, but we don't have any. So if you want to change that, feel free to send us one. GOA at SAS Gaming, GOA at SASS Gaming dot com. Uh, we'll take a listen of it, read it out loud and potentially have a chuckle. So. Uh, that's what got our attention this week. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, make sure to check us out on our Twitch channel, which we do live on Thursday nights. Uh, this week is you know Christmas Eve, and we'll dress up festively sometimes for different events, so it's always good to check us out on the Twitch channel. Uh, if you do get miss the Twitch, uh, the Twitch live, you can always check us out on YouTube later as we republish our uh, video on there, and then also the podcast available on whatever podcast site that you listen to. Uh, if you on YouTube, yeah. So if you uh, if you heard what you or if you want to follow me personally, you can. Um, I'm Zycia. You can follow me at Zycia Gaming on Twitter or Zycia on Twitch or Zycia Game on Instagram. So Phoenix, you want to tell us about your your deets? P H O E E. <laughs> P-H-O-E-N-N-I-X underscore Nova on Twitch. Get rid of the underscore for Twitter. I stream. Oh, sporadically is a kind, kind word for how I stream. And I'm very sorry about that. But if you watch my Twitter feed, uh, you will be able to catch it. Uh, and uh, I will stream all kinds of different things. What about you, Bruno? You can find me uh, on Twitch at D-Y-M-Y-R-N. That's uh, Damir. And on Twitter at DYMYRN Gaming, all one word. Um, I stream pretty sporadically as well. However, um, it'll be getting more regularly every Tuesday from um, roughly 8:30 to <laughs> 12 p.m. Um, <laughs> without fail, um, whether that be Game of the Moment or World of Warcraft rating. Wednesday from 8:30 to 12 again. That'll be World of Warcraft. Um, and then at least once during the weekend on Saturdays or Sundays is what I'm aiming for. That'll be probably not World of Warcraft. It might be like Mythics and stuff, or it could just be a random game, whether that be me playing Cyberpunk or any other thing that I pick up. 
ranging from Stardew Valley's new update to who knows what the fuck. We'll see. Great. Well, until next week, uh, you guys have a happy holidays and uh, y'all take care. Stay safe. Wear a mask as usual. Happy holidays. Thank you.